Hello everybody and welcome back to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today we're going to be going over the Liquid VFX pack from Cinepax of course inside of DaVinci Resolve. If you have the pack already go ahead and follow along with us. If not then head on over to the Cinepax website, go over to the free pack section and find the Chrome sample pack. This one includes one free liquid asset that we're going to be using today and it is free for you to try out. So get that downloaded and follow along. Once you do have all your assets opened and unzipped on your computer, you're going to have to import them. Head on over to the media tab in DaVinci Resolve and just drag your folders into this area right here and that will maintain its folder structure. So I've already done that and we have all of our liquid chrome assets in the media pool. So uh, as you can see, these are all 4K. They are already transparent so they're kind of drag and drop and we are free to start messing with them. So we're gonna start with this clip right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna rotoscope using the liquid, which one is it? The liquid spiral here. We're gonna to try to replicate the same effect that was used in the trailer for this pack. So what we're gonna do is take it straight into Fusion. All right, when we're in Fusion here, this is our main clip right here. We're gonna to go to our media pool and now let's add that liquid spiral right here. So drag that in and we're gonna just drag this node into this node right here and that merges it on top. Green is the foreground, the yellow is the base or our background in this case. So from here what we're going to do is let's just play it through and make sure that it plays all right. I don't really see our liquid. That's because we need to add this. Let's press 2 on the keyboard to visualize this merge in the second viewport. Um, but still once again I don't see our uh, liquid. So let's go over to our keyframes here and as you can see the liquid clip is moved all the way to the front of our timeline which is not where we want it. We want it to be moved up where our edit where we're going to be editing and there it is now it shows up. All right cool so it looks like everything's in place. Let's start rotoscope. Before we do that though let's select this press F2 and let's rename it so we'll rename this the liquid liquid if I can spell, there we go. And we'll main, uh, we'll just keep this as media in because we know that it's our media. All right, so with this selected, we're gonna click shift and spacebar at the same time to bring up our menu here and type in transform. Cool, so then it adds a transform right there. So now we have the freedom to, if we scroll to a part where we can see this better, we have the freedom to move our chrome effects around and rescale it and do whatever we want. So let's kind of scale it down right here. Let's put it like right here. And what I want to do is I want to try to just manually like eyeball it. I want to track it just manually. So we're going to go to the start of our in clip, which is this little yellow. Um, this in and out is where our clip shows up on the timeline. So we're going to go to the start of it and we're going to just move it like right here, I think. And let's keyframe the center and the pivot and the size. Why not? Let's uh, all those right there. Um, angle as well. All right, perfect. Okay, so with those keyframes, we're gonna go forward a little bit and we're gonna just keep this kind of centered on her body. So we'll just keep going forward and once it goes out of frame a little bit, we'll kind of move this over. Not too much though, we wanna make sure it kind of flows a little bit and then move it a little bit downwards right there. And then let's go to the last frame, just kind of move this over and let's play that through and see what it looks like. That looks pretty good, I like that. All right, the last thing we can do to make it just a tad better is we go to our keyframes, which is already open right here. Um, not our keyframes, actually, our spline editor. Let's close the keyframes. And let's go down to our transform. Just click this button to see all our keyframes. Highlight all of them, just drag and drop. And press S to smooth them out. And that's just gonna make the movement just a little bit smoother. Just add some curves to it, perfect. Okay, great, that's looking great so far. Now, the last thing I want to do is this is going to be an easy mask because all I want to do is mask this small little part of her. I want it to go behind her instead of in front of her. And then this spiral will continue to kind of spiral around her. So to do that, let's close out our spine editor and let's move this up so we have some room in our graph editor here. And we are going to add a mask to our liquid here. So let's go ahead and just add a little curve right here, polygon, to our liquid. And let's go in a few frames. And we don't wanna do any work that we don't have to, so let's wait till it actually starts. 
Um, it looks like this got deselected. Why? Where, where did our? Uh, oh, well, it's nothing showing up because of our mask. So let's disconnect it so it's not uh, actually connected to the node yet. And then let's go forward a few frames, and we will start right here. And it looks like we have to kind of mask out this area of her body. So we will just go like this. Let's uh, close this second window out. I believe we can. We just click that button right there. And let's just zoom in. You hold down control, zoom in, and let's create a little mask. So we just click to draw a mask. You want to use less points. You don't want to use more points than necessary because that makes it harder to animate this mask through the frames. So let's just click right here and then uh, click and hold to drag out a curve. And this is going to add a curve and you can also manually adjust these if you grab them. And then go right here, drag out this curve, and then do another curve here on her shoe or heel. And there we go, that looks nice. All right, cool. So there's the start of her mask. Automatically, the mask is already keyframed. So if we go forward a few frames, you can see that it's not following with her. So let's do the exact same thing that we did before. Let's go forward a few frames. Let's grab this. Which button? If we grab this button right here, uh, we need to select all of them. So let's grab all of these just by dragging and dropping. And then we can press this little selection box right here. And it's going to bring up a box so we can just move it. We don't have to do anything else. So let's just grab this, kind of drag it. We don't have to mess with all of them individually. There we go. Perfect. And then it appears our liquid is getting in the way. So if we just click, go to our base media and press 2, that's going to pull up just our media. That way we can see it without anything else in the way, with no other nodes after it. So there we go. Let's drag this, move it like that. And as you can see, it has animated that. So now we just have to go a few more frames. Let's... Uh, pull up our merge just to see where this is. So we want to go all the way up to, let's go a few frames forward here. We don't we don't need to go past her wrist essentially. So we'll just keep that in mind. So let's go back to media one, press two to bring that up and let's have her polygon here. So let's go right, let's right around here. Let's drag and drop. Right now. Okay, so now with that done, let's press 2 to go back to our merge so we can see our merge. Let's go ahead and scroll out so we can see the whole thing and drag our polygon into the mask. So once we do that, you can see it's made the whole thing disappear. Well, that's because it's hiding the wrong thing. So we want to invert this mask because it's working the wrong way. So let's click it, click invert. There we go. Easy, done. Now, even after inverting it, if I play it through, you can see our animation is all messed up. And this is because of an error on my part. I plugged it into our liquid effects here, which is then going through the transform here, which is moving the mask because we animated the transform. So instead, let's disconnect this, and this should solve our problem. If we just double click this to disconnect it, we plug the mask into our merge instead. There you go. You can see that it's no longer passing through that transform node, and we don't have that problem anymore. All right, so let's just play it through, and it's looking good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, there's one part where it kind of catches behind, so give me a moment to clean up this mask now that I'm looking at it. All right, so now that it's cleaned up, you can see it's looking nice, it's looking clean. All we're gonna do is just add a little edge feather. That's it, soft edge right there. No, too much, too much, right there. I think that should do it. If we wanted to, we can also add a glow, so shift spacebar, add a glow right there, and it adds a really interesting kind of, uh, it looks like it's adding a difference blend mode to it. There's other uh, glows that we can mess with, but at the end of the day, just mess with the effects, see what kind of things you want to end up with. I'm kind of liking it. We can make it blue if we take away the green and red channels, and there we go. That looks cool. Bring down this glow just a little bit, maybe. Glow size, bring that up, and the blend. We can bring that down. And that's kind of looking cool. I like I like how that looks. Very neat. Now we got some cool cool effects to it. Awesome. So speaking of changing colors, back in our timeline here. Now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and add maybe a second flow to 
our clip. So we'll just put this right here possibly and we can go ahead and click this little button to reframe it. So we can scale it up since it's 4K, obviously, and kind of move things around. Well, actually, I ended up scaling it down, but <laughs> same, same thought process. And we can do that right there. Now, let's go ahead and let's go and change the colors in the color tab. So what we can do here, if we have our log selected here, is we can just throw this slider wherever we want and make whatever color that we want. So since this is blue, we can go for maybe like a complimentary sort of like um, yellow or maybe like, might look cool, or maybe like a pinkish sort of thing. Let's do, ah, oh, that looks nice, I like that. Um, but you can also change the highlight colors. So if I bring the highlights here, you can see it's only affecting the highlights and making them kind of a more vibrant blue. And we can even affect the shadows, but I don't really like to do that because they look kind of plain or they look weird when you do that. Um, but you can affect any aspect of the colors this way. If we go back in our timeline and play this through, it's actually looking pretty cool. I almost want to make it look the exact same way that this does. So why don't we do that? All I'll do is I'll go back into our Fusion tab. I'll go to our clips here and let's go to our first clip. Copy the glow go back to our second clip and paste the glow. So now the exact same clip, the exact same effect is applied to it. So go back to our edit and play it. And that's looking cool. The only reason it looks different is because we edited it in the color page, which I still think it almost looks cool that way. But we can go ahead and just go to our remove attributes, select color correction and apply. And there we go. Now they look the same. The last thing I'm going to do to tie this off is just add some animated mu uh, movement. So let's just key our transform in the beginning, go to the very end of our clip, which would be right here, and just drag it like right there, just so it has some minor movement to kind of give the illusion that it's, it's motion tracked. So then after this clip, we're going to transition to this with our Shockwave VFX pack in the background. Definitely go check that pack out on the Cinepax website as well. But what we're going to do here is let's just add a simple transition. So Chrome Fluid right here, we got an awesome splash right here. So we'll just press play and let this kind of fly out in front of everything. That's a nice little transition, but I'd like it to go faster. So Control R is going to bring up our retime and we can just grab the top of this clip and scale it down so it's faster. Perfect. That's a little bit smoother. That's a little bit more what I like. All right. Last thing we're going to do is displacement. So we're going to grab this clip. We're going to bring it into Fusion again. All right. Then I'm going to go into Blob 3, and I'm going to drag that in because I like this kind of floating around. So we're going to do a complicated little displace here. So uh, follow along if you can. So what we're going to do is Shift Spacebar, add displacement, displace right there, and drag this over here. Now we're going to be using the Blob as our displacement in. So drag that into the foreground. And so far, let's visualize our displace by pressing two on the keyboard. And right now it's kind of hard to see, it's right there. So let's bring up the intensity of it. So bring up the refraction strength. And as you can see, it's really starting to refract this a lot more than usual. You can even type in your own number to take it past the slider um, point, but I think it's gonna start looking weird. So we're just gonna keep it at maybe 2.35, sure, why not, that looks good. Now, it's very important though that this effect that we're creating is only affecting and displacing the area of the splash because it is possible for it to be offsetting the other parts of the image as a whole if the areas behind it are not purely black or possibly the alpha channel can be messing with it. So, what we're gonna do to fix that is use the blob as our actual mask for the displacement. So split the pin into the blue pin, which is the mask for displacement. So with our media pin split, you can see we got this cool blob effect, and this is different from using a screen effect or, or other uh, blend modes because it's actually displacing the person behind it, which is looking really cool. Now if I wanted to, I can add, you know, a transform to this, and now we can kind of move it around, we can, we can animate it, we can make multiples of them if we want to, and it'll look really cool. We can go to the beginning, keyform our keyframe, our size, our aspect, our angle, all that stuff. Go to the begin, go here and just kind of just kind of move it around, bring up our size, go to the very end of our clip, see what happens here. Just move this up and bring up our size, of course. 
and just see what happens. Just press play, see if that looks cool. And that does look pretty neat. You get this cool kind of blobbing movement to it. And I like how it looks. Very cool. Um, it does need to be moved up a little bit though there. There we go. And there you go, you can animate it and it looks cool. And I can just grab this, copy it, and just paste it if I want to. And add a whole nother one. It, there we go, just like that. And let's just grab our transform and maybe move all these keyframes over. And then press 2 on our second displace to show it up and press play. And as you can see, now they both show up and they look cool. Maybe maybe to make it look like a different one, what we can do is we can we can flip it. So let's go to the transform and let's just flip it like that. There we go. And press play. And now we got a cool mirrored effect. Nice. And there we go, guys. I did one more little transition here to spice the whole edit up. And that concludes our tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys liked this tutorial, go ahead and give us a like, subscribe, and check out the Cinepax store for more assets and packs for your editing needs. Make sure to use the promo code SAMPLE15 on your next order to get 15% off your order. As usual, guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Have fun editing, and peace. Bye.